couch Dogs need adolescents Hey there Lickin' Riffers, how are you doing? Welcome to another awesome finger style lesson right here on Lickin' Riff. In this video we're gonna start finally to talk about composition, improvisation and finger style soloing and we're gonna start using harmonized solos in sixths. I hate that word, sixths, but luckily we don't have to say it, we have to play it. So, um, I didn't mean that rhyme by the way. So, um, by sixths I mean this. Like that. Um, I'm gonna discuss the a little bit of theory behind it, but uh, you're gonna do most of the work because, um, in contrary to what most teachers say, you can't really teach anyone to solo, improvise, or compose. You have to teach yourself how to play it. I can only show you some ideas. I can show you basic techniques. I can show you um, a little bit of the concepts behind it. But you're gonna do most of the work because the main thing is developing your ear. You have to hear it in order to play it. So I'm gonna help you the best I can, and then you're gonna do it. So uh, we're gonna focus on uh, the D scale, the A scale, and maybe the E scale. Uh, they both have kind of the same um, mechanism on the guitar neck. It's easy to uh, memorize it. So let's start with the D scale. Now we have two sorts of uh, sixth harmonies. Um, you have the major sixth and the minor sixth. Okay, so um, a scale, a major scale is comprised of a major sixth, then two minors, two majors, then another minor, and another major. Okay? So you can also look at it like this. You start from the basic chord. Okay? This is D, so we're playing two and two on strings, one and three. So it's a major sixth. And then you have minor, minor, major, major, minor, major, major. Okay? Back to D. Okay, it's an octave above the original root. So on strings one and three you have two and two, okay, a major sixth, then three and four, five and six, seven and seven, nine and nine, ten and eleven, twelve and twelve, and if you want uh, the octave uh, sixth then you have fourteen and fourteen. Okay, so again, two and two, three and four, five and six, seven, seven, nine and nine, ten and eleven, twelve and twelve, and fourteen and fourteen. Now, on A, you have the same thing only on strings two and four. Okay, this is the A major scale in sixths. Right? Now, um, in E, it's a bit different, so let's talk a little bit about the theory, then we're gonna talk about the E scale, and then we're gonna start soloing. The theory behind it is that each sixth is uh, actually an outline of a chord. So uh, this is D, okay, because it's D. Um, and this is its fourth. And the D's fourth is G. So if you play a G chord, then you have three and four on strings one and three. Then you have the fifth. So it's A. And if you play A, you'll see that you have these two notes. Then it's the fourth again. Okay, this is G again because B, E, F, G. So the fourth again. Then the fifth again. If this is G, then this is A. Right? Just a whole tone above it. Then you have D again. Okay? Okay, so it's D again. 
and then you have this, 12 and 12, is E minor. Now, E minor is the second chord of the D major scale, and then you have, okay? Now, these harmonies can also outline their minor relatives. G can outline E minor or E minor 7, A can outline F sharp minor or F sharp minor 7, and D can outline B minor. But um, this is if you're soloing um, along with another guitar player. But if you're soloing alone, then basically all you need to know is uh, which bass note to play, and basically you can alternate between D and A here. You can do this. Okay, something like this. Now the only bass change was into A when I played this. But you can stay on D and just fool around with it. Okay, you don't really have to change the harmony if you're sitting alone and just practicing this. You don't have to concentrate on the bass notes. Uh, you don't even have to add bass notes at all. Now, um, in A, of course, this is A, and this is D, okay, and then this is E, and then it's D again, okay, because it's this, and then it's E again, okay, again, and then A, then it's this, which can um, sound like E7, and this is A again. So um, let's start with the soloing. You can play them together. Okay, you can play them one after the other. Okay, instant melodies. And you can uh, alternate between together and apart. You can also uh, slide, as I just did. Okay, you can slide them both. Now, you can add chromatics between them. For example, between 3 and 4 and 5 and 6, you can add 4 and 5. like this. Um, you can also do it between 7-7 seven, seven and 9-9. Nine and nine. Okay? And um, of course between 12-12 uh, and 14-14. And okay? Just Think about a rhythm or just start playing and let the rhythm figure itself out, okay? Sometimes it takes a few minutes, sometimes it takes a week, sometimes it comes instantly. Don't, um, don't be afraid to experiment, just let yourself try to hear it. Now the most important thing is to not worry about mistakes. If for example instead of 5 and 6 you play 5 and 5, that's just a different harmony, you can call it a mode, okay, a mode of the scale. You don't really, uh, you can't really make mistakes in music as long as you keep on going and don't stop, okay. For example, let me just tell you, uh, show you something. Was there anything wrong about it? No, it was just A minor instead of A. It was just a mode, it was just a little bit different. Okay, so don't worry about mistakes. No such thing as mistakes as long as you don't regard them as mistakes. Now let's try a little bit of something with A. Now let's start here. Okay, this is A again. Okay, 10 and 11. So... I'm trying to give you the simplest examples I can, um, just, you know, as to not overwhelm you and confuse you, and I'm trying to keep it simple, just around the harmonies and around the simple sixth. Um, but again, if I make a mistake along the way, I'm just 
you know, I just keep playing. Right? Instead of um, five and six and nine and nine, I played the, the exact opposite. I played a minor here and a major here. So it was um, E minor instead of E, but that's fine. And I played five and five instead of five and six. So instead of E, again, this was E minor. So um, you see, it all works. Okay? You can also, uh, in A, you can also add the open E string as your pedal note. Try different things. I don't want to tell you what to do. I just want to inspire you to try it on your own. Now let's talk about E. Um, in E, you have a little bit of a difference. The major sixth is um, one and two on strings three and five. Okay? The minor is two and four. Okay? So you have one and two, two and four, and then um, four and six, and then six and seven. Okay, I'm a little bit confused because I got used to the uh, other two scales. And then it's uh, eight and nine, then nine and 11, then 11 and 12, and back to E, which is 13 and 14. So. two different bass notes can be a bit uh, dirty, can muddle the sound, um, so you can just use the notes on the A string as your bass notes. And whenever you return to E, you can give out an E bass, but usually if you add, uh, let's say, um, let's say, yeah, this sounds a bit weird. So um, if you like it, use it, if not, you can just use uh, the open E and B strings as your pedal notes. Okay, and you can also uh, combine these. You can combine the A and B scales. You can combine the A and A scales. And uh, using your ear, you can uh, try to adjust the scales uh, accordingly. But you can also play the E scale and then the A scale, and then uh, it would sound as if you really know what you're doing because you'd be alternating scales. And the alternation is just one or two notes. It doesn't really make that much of a difference to be noticeable. So, um...
Also, uh, if you want to solo over it, really, really solo over it without any bass notes with a different person, it's a little bit different. You can really create, um, you know, uh, Spanish sounding harmonies and country sounding harmonies, for example. Okay, just a double slide uh, lick. Okay, just sliding the top and adding the, the top, <laughs> sliding the bottom and adding the top. Okay, and um, also a bit of uh, Spanish stuff. Um, um, okay, stuff like that. Uh, it all depends on the rhythm you come up with and the rhythm you have to play on. Um, just experiment with it, have fun, and try to come up with your own interpretations for this. The options are nearly endless. Again, it all depends on the rhythm, on the harmonies, and on your own creativity. So before you go practice this, subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. I've got a ton of lessons already on the channel and I upload a new one every couple of days or so, including a full finger style arrangement every now and then, every three weeks, something like that. And um, go download the tab from the website, the link is below in the description, and it's for free, everything is for free right here on Lick and Riff, but if you want to give something back, there's a large blue donation button right above the tab, you can't miss it, it's large, it's blue, it's oval, it says donate, and uh, everything of course goes right back into Lick and Riff, into making these lessons, into making uh, the videos, the arrangements, the tabs, editing the lessons, uploading them, it all takes a lot of time and effort, so if you want to help out, I'd be more than grateful for any donation you choose to make. So. Um, um, I'll see you at the next lesson. Thank you very much for watching. Go have fun with this. Bye for now.